So I, I, we're just going to talk about something quite different now, walk away from whole genome sequencing for a little while. And I think it's fair to say that none of us can really predict the future. Might be going out on a limb here with some of you in the audience, but I think it's, it's a fair comment. We might imagine what alternative futures might look like. We might look at signs in the present to try and anticipate what pathway the future might take. Here in the present in food safety land, we rely a lot on early warning systems to tell us when there's a hazard that needs our attention. So these are valuable, obviously. They protect public health, they protect market access. But they're by their nature reactionary. We're monitoring something, there's a blip in the system, we need to respond to that. But what if we could try to anticipate future events a little better? What if we could look for the risks and opportunities that might be coming over the horizon? So this, this whole concept of horizon scanning isn't new. Uh, the food, uh, European Food Safety Authority, or EFSA, have been doing it for over a decade, looking at food safety risks, emerging risks. And there's various other organisations and companies that also do it in their own ways. And early on, when the Food Safety Centre was established, it was recognised that the centre might be a hub for looking for emerging risks and opportunities, and that this information could be used to guide research. So, as Kevin mentioned, as a prelude to a panel discussion, I'm going to present to you the findings of a project that was laid at our feet. The challenge was to think about how we could look for emerging risks and opportunities. Apologies. There we go, we're away. So before we continue, um, just like to recognise the, um, the funders of this project, the organisations that were brave enough to put a money, bit of money forward towards a project where fundamental and applied sciences generally took a bit of a back seat. And also, I'm just the poor soul who gets to stand up here today. Um, the four, there's four members of my team, so I'd like to acknowledge Rosemary, who was uh, University of Otago, and um, Harvey Ho from University of Auckland, and Gail Brightwell, who many of you know um, from Ag Research. So, let's just get a few definitions out of the way without throwing the dictionary in front of you, but what is horizon scanning? Well, we can start off with what it's not. It's not an early warning system. It's not intended to be reactionary. But, of course, if we identify something um, that we had been monitoring but perhaps not in the right way, then that's, it's not a bad outcome. But neither is it a crystal ball. It can't predict the future. It's a structured and systematic process that takes in a wide range of qualitative and quantitative information a lot of that being non-scientific, looks for signals and trends in that information to try and anticipate possible medium and long-term futures. Here we're talking 5, 10, 15, 20 plus years. And the purpose is to support decision making in the present. So when we think about this, it's quite appropriate that these kinds of techniques are used to guide research. So what is an emerging risk? Well, EFSA have provided this um, rather particular Definition, and we find it's actually being adopted a bit elsewhere. Whether or not it's suitable for New Zealand is a conversation we can still have. But essentially, EFSA considered an emerging risk as a new hazard with some form of significant exposure in the population, or a known hazard, something we already know about, but there's a new exposure, <clears throat> something has changed, or there's something also changed in the population where they've become more susceptible to this known hazard. So what is an emerging opportunity? Well, part of our job was to try and figure this out, actually, because most food safety systems focus on risks. And so um, we actually took a lot of the information um, provided to us by people involved in the project, and I'll get to that shortly, and we've crafted this almost straw man definition. So we think it's more about knowledge, a lot of that being knowledge around technology, that leads to the development of new products or markets, increases efficiency in food production or regulatory compliance, or helps avoid or mitigate food safety risks. So it's kind of a starting point for discussion. But we could get hung up on whether things are emerging opportunities or emerging risks, and whole gene sequencing is a really good example of a technology that's actually both. And EFSA recognised this one too, very well documented all this stuff. So they've crafted this um, very wordy definition about what they considered an emerging issue was. So a recently identified topic needs some further investigation, the information is a bit limited, they can't really decide if it's a risk or an opportunity at this point. 
So it's great to get to this kind of um, understanding, but we took this on board really to think about, well, let's just talk about emerging issues from here and let's not try and put it in the bad box or the good box, because one could be a risk to somebody, it might be an opportunity for others. So we'll just park all those definitions now. What do we actually do? Well, we conducted semi-structured interviews with people from 12 New Zealand organisations, all of them associated with the food industry in some way, and three overseas organisations. We also had a number of conversations with the likes of Biosecurity New Zealand, who of course have their own system for monitoring biosecurity risks, and a number of other overseas organisations. Not all of these were actually directly involved in food safety. And the whole purpose of this was that we recognise when it comes to setting up a system in New Zealand, there's no need to start from scratch. People have been doing this. Why don't we just find out what went wrong for them, what works for them, what can we learn from them, and actually just get a bit of a head start, not start from scratch. So from all of the New Zealand interviews and documents, there was a whole lot of stuff that came out of that, and I'm not going to talk about all of them today. Just going to show you three things, three findings. Firstly, there was already a lot of networking and monitoring going on, and most of this was fairly informal and unstructured, but the networks were there, and I think, um, having known a lot of people now throughout the industry, people do talk to each other in New Zealand. People wanted a broad scope, so let's not, not focus on food safety, but let's also bring in the things that are related to that, so looking at consumer perceptions, market access, those kinds of things, plant and animal health. And finally, they wanted to, well, we posed the question, do you want to look at risks and opportunities separately? Do you think that they should be looked at together? And um, a lot of the, um, there wasn't a strong view, and I think it was more people hadn't been given time to consider what they really thought. Um, but through the conversations, there was uh, more enthusiasm for thinking about things and emerging issues rather than risks and opportunities. So rather than have two separate systems, at this point we're sort of proposing, let's just go forward with one and see how that rolls. So I'm going to blow various points of this diagram up for you shortly. Um, so the end of it was a proposed framework. We pulled together all of the information from the documents and the interviews and all the various conversations and it all boiled down to 13 key findings. And we used these key findings to underpin a proposed structure for what a horizon scanning system could look like in New Zealand. So let's just talk through that. So the first finding is there's no right or wrong way to do this. There's no magic system that's going to work. And we saw a lot of diversity in the systems that were already in place. They're obviously set up for different reasons and different priorities. And they could be kind of split into two, two approaches. So the first one is a data-centred approach. And this is more of the thing that we actually had in our minds when we started this project we they canvass a wide range of data sources, try to distill out of that um, the important parts and interpret it, and then experts bring their opinions into that interpretation and identify emerging risks that way. The other is what we've termed expert centre. So this is where we start with a group of people and bring their opinions together. They've identified a bunch of emerging issues, prioritise those, and then the data scanning begins. So efficient horizon scanning evolves around, revolves around expert opinion. Uh, the numerical, it's, it's, we haven't missed a finding, by the way. It just relates back to the report for those of you who have, have a copy. So there, were, there was one organisation and EFSA, which is very well documented. These two organisations both began with this data-centred approach. EFSA ran this for two years, they reviewed it, and they decided it just was not working. The analysts were overwhelmed with information, and um, both organisations, EFSA and this other one, found that even after all this effort, they identify an emerging risk, take it back to the expert group, and the experts say, well, we already knew about that. So it's far more efficient to start with people. And so in the diagram, we've, we've placed the experts in the centre, so the, the red boxes represent people. And their role is to identify the emerging risks. So 
it's also crucial to have the right mix of experts. So who are these people? And um, some, of the organi uh, some of the horizon scanning systems that we looked at, they didn't just stick to the same old food safety faces. They really expanded it out and included um, people, say, from plant and animal health, economists, policy analysts. It's about thinking a lot wider about who this expert group could be. But having the right mix is, of course, really important. So we've also got this other group of people called the decision makers. And this um, reflects a little bit back to what Phil was saying about making sure that the information that comes out is connected to the people who actually need to use it. And so the horizon scanning of processes do need to be really integrated with these decision makers. And that was a criticism that was levelled at one of the systems that we looked at, where were, the knowledge was coming out of the system, but it hadn't been transferred and transformed into something that could actually be used by the decision makers. Now, in reality, the decision makers might be the same people as the expert group, but it's important to recognise them as a separate group. And in the middle there, we also have these subject matter analysts. So these are the people who actually need to do the job to do the scanning, to do the communication. They need to have a mandate to do this as part of their day-to-day -day work. And one of the learnings from one, another system in New Zealand was that they found if people were involved in this in a regular way, they became familiar with what actually was an emerging risk. If something new came up, they could say, well, actually, we've seen that before, or no, we know about this. They became familiar with what the expert group needed and what the communicators needed at the end. So this fourth bit out the side um, has been included because when it comes to these kinds of things, horizon scanning or anything like this tends to drop down the priority list on that day-to-day -day stuff, you know. There's always going to be other things that become more important. And so recognise that there needed to be somebody on the outside. And actually one, one system did run this. They had a consultancy whose responsibility it was was to keep that system running while people within it were diverted into other things as things continued along. And also somebody who um, perhaps has some expert expertise in sort of futures methods and horizon scanning could be a real advantage here. So that's the people part of the picture. So now we just talk a little bit about the information. So this, this refers back to what I was saying at the start, that focusing the data scanning on the high priority things is what will make it efficient. And so this is um, information generated using defined search criteria across specified information sources. And one of the things that we did find is that it could be really important to first of all take a, take a look at what the drivers of change are in New Zealand. I think we've got a reasonable handle on it. There's a lot of stuff that's happened overseas, but a lot of the food sectors are affected by the same drivers of change. So we're thinking here like changing consumer behaviour, climate change, food processing technology, and that could be really important to actually help um, prioritise some of these things. So... We've talked about the priority focus scanning, but actually some routine data scanning could actually add value. So this is more of that dynamic, continuous type scanning activity that we were thinking about at the start. And when we're thinking about this, we're um, thinking about things like reports coming out of other horizon scanning systems or other um, relevant organisations where there's already been some data analysis and filtration and things going on but also starting to look at things like the media, like looking at social media tools. And the whole purpose of this would be to reduce duplication because a lot of the organisations are looking at the same stuff. So why don't we just look at it together and stop everybody having to do the same job? And what are, the, what are the information sources that we're looking at? Well, it's a variety of things and not all of it is scientific. We're thinking about softer information sources as well. But no matter what we use, those information sources need to be well characterised. So that's thinking about things like their reliability and their biases, but without any attempt to rank it because emerging issues and emerging opportunities are more likely to be identified through quite weak signals, quite soft sources with data gaps and uncertainties. So we need to really understand the information it's coming from because be really, they will be really supported by strong evidence. And that's a bit of a mindset change for us as scientists who like things to be a little more certain. So it's going to be an interesting journey. 
Now, um, the green boxes represent a number of computational tools, which I'm not going to talk anything more about today, other than to mention that one of the, uh, another criticism we picked up on, on uh, one system was the lack of a central system where you could um, look at an emerging issue and track what happened to it over a number of years. And when you're talking about research, this could go on for years. So at any point that those decisions made along the way need to be... Um, tracks so that you can understand the history behind them. So if you've been keeping count, you know that I'm not up to number 13. Um, and so there's just two more here. So um, obviously we need to be connected. There's no point in um, sitting down here doing our own little bit. Um, it's mutually beneficial to connect up with others in the world doing similar activities. And, uh, and finally, number 13, doing horizon scanning is not in itself a long-term commitment. You can do a bespoke piece of work and you can finish it, but actually committing to a long-term system, that's where it takes some commitment and resources. So, before the panel discussion, what next? Well, in September last year, uh, the Food Centre hosted a workshop where we talked through this project. We went on and we talked through a number of emerging issues in the industry, had some great discussion, and in many ways, the people who attended that workshop were acting like experts. They were becoming themselves, whether they liked it or not, part of an expert group to talk about emerging issues. And, you know, maybe that's a way forward. Maybe we could start incorporating horizon scanning approaches in existing projects, running it alongside for six or 12 months, and perhaps that's a way to trial this and just see if it actually has some benefit. Or maybe there's an appetite to launch boots and all into a big system. So the panel that's going to talk about this next have been challenged to think about the what next steps, um, so be gentle with them.